Hello, my name is Rhonda Kitchens and I am a librarian for Argosy University Tampa. This presentation is called Sticks and Stones because it's just going to look at a very basic reference. That is the one for a scholarly article with or without a DOI. We're going to go through it element by element and also show you how to do the in-text citations. Now, this doesn't cover everything. However, the publication manual 6th edition published in 2010 does mostly, but it doesn't do everything. I would like to encourage you not to Google aimlessly trying to find answers, but go here to blog.apastyle.org. If you have a question about something that's new, something like streaming video did not really exist at the time that the manual was published. So I'm going to type that in here and you'll see that they give you an example of this. Um, actually, it's in the video. I did uh, have a helpful, which is helpful, by the way, and it breaks it down and also tells you some things about some basics because this actually has some parentheses and brackets in it that you would not, ex you know, think might be true. You can also type in something like YouTube, APS about YouTube, and it's going to give you some examples of that so that you'll be able to do it accurately. Okay, and it kind of gives you some other help within. Now, the reason you would choose this over Googling aimlessly is because these people are the people who will be creating the new edition of this. They are the professionals behind the book. They are the people who understand the style. So I advocate that when you have questions to go to them and you can also come to me, but I will let you know right off. Um, I will actually go to them as well. Um, because I like to see that I'm telling you the truth. When I'm talking to you about APA, I'm not talking to you about how you may have been graded in the past. I'm talking to you about APA based on the most difficult professor you may have that's very strict about APA. And that's my job. You may have done things differently in the past that um, were acceptable, but consider they're not always going to be acceptable and it's time to perhaps upgrade. The basics for APA, which I'm not really going to go over, but it's really standard, is Times New Roman will be the font style. It's going to be 12 point. Your margins are one by one by one by one. Um, and those are usually easy to set in the layout. Um, sample papers and other things you may need. I have provided you with the URL. Again, notice that I am picking the, uh, APA style area to find my answers. The other thing I do find to be acceptable is OWL. Um, I still think the APA style is stronger because I have seen some errors in it, but these are two different places for you to look at papers. I just wanted to provide those to you. Instead of, because I'm going to send this to you, uh, you're getting um, a handout and a presentation about your handout, which always isn't strictly, uh, you know, suggested, but I think it's going to work for us. I want to make sure you understand about what you're citing, what it looks like, and what it means. We see that this particular thing is written by Ganilla Peterson. Now, when you see a paper, they are not all done in APA style. You'll see some variations, and you'll see that sometimes they may be an augmentation. So what you see in the paper, which may be APA style, understand it may be augmented and do not copy and use it. One of the biggest issues I see with students is that when they read an article, they'll go up here, and this is the top part, the introduction or maybe the theoretical background. See what the, the um, author does. They talk about something, and then they tell you all the places they read it. This may seem like a very strange in-text citation for you, but you actually might be able to um, use it yourself. When you see this string, and I think the C, for example, is uh, not always needed. Uh, it may be a style specific to the journal. Suppose you have something that a group of th um, a group of authors all believe and all mentioned in their papers. Are you going to have to put a citation for each thing? No, you'll just put the in-text citation with a colon. And that's how those will end. This is a so this is somewhat APA. What sometimes students do is they go up here and they use this as belonging to this author. It does not. And the author is very clear about this. It belongs 
to something else and it usually it's in your in-text citation and you'll be able to go see it so when you're looking at this this is actually called a secondary citation and it refers not to this but it refers as cited in this person's paper unless you've read it in full text you shouldn't cite it and that's a basic rule secondary um citations are often frowned upon uh, some cases you are not able to use it when you're working on a dissertation. Uh, make sure you consult your professor, but I'm going to put here secondary and uh, secondary sources and how to treat them. So you'll see here they give you some different ways of doing it and you'll see it is like this and it cites the thing that you read in full text. So I hope you see not only how I'm using the article, but how I'm using APA uh, style blog to make sure that I cite it correctly. Now let's go back to this article. Now, all of that information up there that's actually attributed to another author has to be treated in that style, or you have to find the article in its original piece and read it full text, and then you can cite that. Now when you get down here and you see all this type of writing where there's no attributions, this is where you're using the author's work. Um, we'll go down here. This is the author's work. They're talking about what they use. And usually the conclusion, which we'll be getting to at any minute now, the conclusion is really quite full of the author's work. But you'll see here this finding compared to does me mention Peterson but I think how this is used it'll probably be uh, go to this Peterson but I wanted you to know when you're citing and attributing your work for a scholarly article these are the areas you're working with and these are some of the rules that you need to follow